Hey guys, we are on day 309 in our Bible reading plan, and today we are reading in the books of Luke and Matthew. We're reading Luke 20 and 21 and Matthew chapter 23. So some of these things we've already read over the last few days. Um, in Luke chapter 20, it starts out with the authority of Jesus being questioned by the Pharisees. He refuses to tell them where his authority comes from because they refuse to respond with where John got his authority. And we read a really similar account to this a few days ago in uh, Mark 11 and in Matthew 21. Then we read uh, in verses 9 through 20, the parable of the tenants and the landowner's son. We read that a few days ago in Matthew chapter 21 as well. Verses 20 through 26 address paying taxes to Caesar. Uh, we just read this yesterday in Matthew 22 and in Mark 12. Then in verses 27 through 40, we read about the resurrection and marriage. We just read that yesterday too. So some of these things, as you're reading, you're getting really familiar with some of these accounts and these stories because we've been spending time learning about them for more than a day. <laughs> some of these stories we've read multiple days this week. Some of them um, we've just read multiple times in a single day. After this, after the resurrection and marriage, we read in verses 41 through 44, uh, the question of whose son is the Messiah. And we just discussed that yesterday in Matthew 22 and in Mark 12. And then we read verses 45 through 47, beware the teachers of the law, uh, they're corrupt hypocrites. And we read that yesterday in Mark 12 as well. Then Luke 21 starts out with the widow's offering. And we just read this yesterday again in Mark 12. And then we get into something new. We read the destruction of the temple and the signs of the end of the age for the rest of this chapter. Luke 21, 5 through 38 covers this in great detail. And then as we get into Matthew 23, we start reading warnings against hypocrisy. Verses 1 through 12, there's a warning against hypocrisy. 13 through 14 begin a list of woes, the seven woes, uh, <laughs> to be exact, to the teachers of the law, the Pharisees, the elders. Uh, 13 through 14 says, Woe to you, teachers of the law. They shut the door of the kingdom in people's faces. Verse 15 tells us that the teachers of the law travel over land and sea to win a single convert and then make them twice as much a son of hell as they are. Verses 16 through 22, Jesus calls them blind guides, elevating the wealth of the temple and not the God that they worship. Verses 23 through 24 says, Woe to the Pharisees, why? Because they're legalistic and in their worship and they are neglecting justice and mercy and faithfulness. Verses 25 through 26 tells us that the Pharisees are hypocrites who look clean on the outside, but they are not clean on the inside. 27 through 28 continues um, to say woe to the Pharisees for this in the same vein. It says they are like whitewashed tombs, clean on the outside, but dead, full of death and decay on the inside and unclean on the inside. They're full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Verses 29 through 32 says, woe to the teachers of the law. Why? Because they're hypocrites. Again, who build tombs for the prophets and they decorate the graves of the righteous whom their ancestors killed and persecuted. We read in verses 33 through 36 that Jesus addresses the Pharisees. He says, you snakes, you brood of vipers, how will you escape being condemned to hell? Therefore, I'm sending prophets and sages and teachers. But here's the deal. They are going to kill all of the ones that the Lord sends to turn them back and call them to repentance. And then in 37 through 39, we read a lament of Jesus. How often ha I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings and you were not willing. And I'm just reminded as I read through this today, uh, just the history of the people of God over and over again, wandering over and over again, worshiping other gods over and over again, practicing injustice. When God continues to call them to repentance over and over again, we read in the scriptures how often he sent a prophet or a teacher to call his people back to warn them of impending judgment and doom and what is coming. And here again, Jesus says that God longs to gather his people to him, but they are unwilling. And as I was reflecting on that, it just occurred to me what a compassionate and gracious and loving God we have. He sent Jesus to die for us because he knew that we would continue to fall short, that we could not ever fulfill the covenant 
on our own, that we could never fulfill the law on our own, that we needed Jesus and his sacrifice to be made once for all to cover our sins so that we could know God and be in fellowship with God once again, so that we could return to him because he knows that we just couldn't do it on our own. We serve a gracious and loving and compassionate and merciful God who longs for us to be in his presence. He longs for his people. I don't know about you, but that encourages me today as I'm reflecting on who God is through the scriptures, that at any moment I can approach God. It doesn't matter what I've done. It doesn't matter how far I've wandered or how far we've strayed. He is there waiting with open arms, longing to gather us up to himself if we would just turn to him. I hope that encourages you that wherever you are, whatever you've done, whatever you've been going through, no matter how far away you feel from God, that he will take you back, he will embrace you, he will wrap his arms around you because his desire is for you, for your good, and for your eternity. I'd love to hear how the Lord is speaking to you through his word, so go ahead and drop a comment in the Bible app, and let's encourage one another today. Have a great day, guys.